that song first came out was like, wow, that speaks our message, doesn't it? And how important it is for us to be that light. I, you know, as I was working on my talk, I was thinking about how in unity, one of the things that I love about unity is it really encourages us to be the most brilliant expression of love that we can possibly be. And to be that expression of light and goodness and oneness and compassion and kindness and um, inclusivity. And unity also gives us tools on how to do that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So in unity, our teachings are based on the life and teachings of Jesus the Christ. Now, we see Jesus as a way shower. We see him as a master teacher. And for me, I see him as an incredible metaphysician as well. And it's evidence uh, as you uh, look at his teachings and you think about those lost years that he studied some of the other great spiritual masters and teachers that went before him. And one of those teachers that we are talking or continuing to talk about today is the Buddha and Buddhism. And we're doing that based on a book uh, by Reverend Joan Gattuso. She's a unity minister called The Lotus Still Blooms. Her passion was, uh, is bringing Eastern and Western traditions together, and especially bringing those Eastern traditions together with what we teach in unity. So last week we talked about the four noble truths. And if you don't know the four noble truths, I encourage you to go and listen to last week's um, so that you can have a clearer understanding of what they are. Although I'm going to say this right now, I am not uh, well studying in Buddhism, so I'm not speaking from an authority, authoritative place, uh, but from just having a love for the, these teachings in general. So the four noble truths, number one, life is suffering, Ugh, right? <laughs> number two, the cause of suffering is our own grasping and clinging our attachments to our desires. How many of us have held on to something way past the time that we, we should have really let it go? <laughs> How many times, huh? Number three, cessation of suffering is possible. Yay! <laughs> Number four, presentation of the eightfold path leads to the end of suffering and promotes well-being. So the Eightfold Path, it's a methodical process for moving toward an enlightened state of being using these spiritual tools to get there. They are right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right con concentration. So last week we started by talking about right view. And the thing that came for me as I was sitting with this this morning is that Maria Nemeth, an author, uh, talked about that we have these structures of knowing, and these structures of knowing uh, are comprised of everything that we learned as we were growing up, of things that we came to believe about life, about God, about um, just about ourselves, and so we've created these structures of knowing. They become our perceptions, and when we are viewing what is happening in life, happening in life only through those structures of knowing or through our own perceptions, we are not viewing with right view. We are viewing, again, through our human perceptions, right? So we want to let our structures of knowing, we want to let them down. So um, we are willing to recognize that our perspective might be a little skewed. Do you think so? Yeah? And, and so right view is that we're, we're going to open ourselves up to a, vi a bigger view and we're going to see things from a higher, more spiritual uh, way of seeing things. So uh, today we're going to start with right thought. And I love this. Thinking is the speech of the mind. Thinking is the speech of the mind. How many words are going on in your head right now? How many words go on in your head on a regular basis? You know, I was telling Paul when we were on vacation, and I, and I went in just to meditate for a little while, and, and I told him later, I said, man, you know, this monkey mind thing, I don't have just one monkey in there. I have multiple monkeys that are just going wham, 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 you know. We, we, are, we are thinkers, aren't we? We're, there's a lot going on in our heads. But Reverend Gattuso says, when our thinking is aligned with right view, then we are thinking clearly in accord with the highest 
ideals. Uh, we are often caught what, in what The Course in Miracles calls upside down thinking. And the problem is, is that when we're in upside down thinking, we don't know that we're in upside down thinking because we think we're right. And the example of that she gave is that many people used to believe that the world was flat, but just because they believed it didn't make it so. So how many of us can say, yeah, I've, I've had some upside down thinking in my life where I thought something was a certain way and found out later that I didn't have all the facts? Yeah. So, um, so to, here's a few things that we can do to prevent upside down thinking or wrong thought. Number one, associate with like-minded friends and acquaintances. Of course, that helps. I know that we've said before, you know, in our area, there's not a lot of like-minded places that you can come together and talk about what we talk about. Um, really, you know, lean into those dreams and those visions of used words like manifestation and, um, and not be, you know, just... So it's important that, we, that we're with like-minded people, but not just that... It's important that if we find ourselves, say, in our workplace, in our neighborhood, in our church community, that maybe um, there are people around us who are gossiping about other people, um, who have some real negative worldviews, then we may want to think about how we can step away maybe from some of that. Because we, it's, if, and, and when we look at our world today, and when we look at everything that's bombarding us on the news, it's kind of hard to keep this right thinking, isn't it? Because we're being bombarded with all this other stuff. So it's, it's making decisions as to what we're going to allow in our consciousness here. Second thing is faithfully keep a, a, a spiritual practice. Now, this to me is a no-brainer. Uh, you know, you wake up in the morning and you read the daily word or you, you meditate or you pray or whatever it is that you do to get your thinking in alignment with the greater reality, with the greater truth. How much better is our day when we do that? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and uh, this is, and I love the scripture that we had today, think in accord with that which is spiritually true, good, kind, helpful, and loving. And it, this is actually from the, the Bible, the voice. Finally, brothers and sisters, fill your minds with beauty and truth. Meditate on what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is good, whatever is virtuous and praiseworthy. Now, even just reading that, doesn't that make you feel good? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that feels so much better than letting my mind go crazy and all this negative stuff. Let's get our minds here more often. And then the third thing is keep an affirmation or a mantra handy uh, for to repeat, especially when you're being pulled into a fearful or, or judgmental situation. So a, a, an affirmation like, peace, be still. Harry, Papa Harry used to always say to me, he was our 97, 98-year-old um, amazing man. I'm sorry that some of you didn't get to meet him. But he would always say to me, Sue, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. That was a, that was a big one. Um, you know, you can think of other things that you would that you would say to you know, love is in the midst of this. And I, I've shared before that when I went through um, a divorce, that it was kind of gnarly in the beginning. And I don't know if any anybody here has ever had a breakup. And you know how like when you break up. And, and, like, your mind is going crazy in this negative space about the other person. Well, I didn't want to be there. I knew better than to be there. And so I created this affirmation that was simply said, I lovingly release you to the universe. And I put it on Post-it notes, and I put it in my car, and I put it in my bathroom, and I put it in my kitchen. I put it places where I would go into that crazy movie in my head. And I go, no, I lovingly release you to the universe. And who did it change? It changed me. So this is, this is all about changing us. Okay. So in Buddhism, there are three practices that instruct us in right thought, and they're very helpful in creating a calm mind. And they are, am I sure? What am I doing? And do I know that, I mean, I'm sorry, is it helpful? So in am I sure, frequent, frequently ask yourself this. Are you sure that what you're thinking is about a person or situation is actually accurate? Or is it a story that somebody told you or a story that you're telling yourself? 
I love Byron Katie's work. And in Byron Katie's work, you ask yourself the question, is it true? And many times when we first ask ourselves just that question, we'll be like, well, yeah. But then the second question is, do I really know that it's true? And boy, when you ask that second question, you know, you kind of have to take a step back and say, do I really actually know that this is true, what I'm thinking about this other person or the situation? Almost all the time, you're, the answer to that question is going to be no. And then what am I doing? And, you know, when you create needless stress for yourself, ask yourself, what am I doing? Uh, when you're anxious, what am I doing? Are these things maybe habits, habitual ways of being? When you feel anger rising, what am I doing? When you think unkindly about another person, what am I doing? When you're harboring ill feelings or resentment, ask, what am I doing? And I'll tell you what, the first person to be asking about is what am I doing to myself, right? Because whatever's in there, it's, it's affecting you first. And then ask, is this helpful? So is this attitude helpful? Is this prejudice or bias helpful? Is this fear or this anger helpful? Is this guilt helpful? Is this long-held belief helpful? So you ask those questions. And what she says is that our lifelong opportunity is to ultimately free our minds of these kinds of thoughts. And even if we don't get to the point where we're totally free of them, we're going to get there much quicker if we're practicing, right? We're going to recognize when I'm when I'm in that space in my head and I'm and I'm we're going to recognize it sooner. And you know, we can use some of the tools that we've talked about already with a, a mantra or an affirmation or whatever to shift it. Right thinking is always aligned with the highest spiritual ideal. Right? To, to me, this is really backing up and knowing that whatever I am witnessing in front of me isn't the whole truth. It's not the whole truth. It's never the whole truth. And I also look at this as when you look at your life experience, and we've talked about this before, and you connect the dots, you can see how everything is lined up. Well, when we're in wrong thinking, we're forgetting that. And we're, and this is the worst thing that could ever happen. Or, you know, this person is the worst person, you know, that could ever be. And we're forgetting all along the way how all these things have brought us to where we are today. So, um, you know, this is in perfect alignment with what we teach in unity. The quality of our thoughts determine the quality of our experience. Yes? Yes. <laughs> the quality of our thoughts determine the quality of our experience. So the third one is right speech. This is a big one. The Dhammapada, verse 100, and the Dhammapada is a sayings of the Buddha in verse form and one of the most widely read and best known uh, Buddhist scriptures. It says, better than a speech of a thousand vain words is one thoughtful word which brings peace to the mind. And not just to our mind, but to other people's minds. What uh, Reverend Gattuso says is that when we practice right speech, we are constantly mindful of the vibration and the impact upon ourselves and others of the words that we are speaking. Because what we know is that words have a vibration, right? Words create an energy. And so we want to be mindful of the words that we are speaking about, again, ourselves and about others. Uh, when we speak angry words, when we speak harsh words, when we speak words that are putting other people down, a vibration is emanating from us. And again, guess who's getting it first? We are. As you give, so you receive. It is in the giving that we are receiving. So when I'm speaking these harsh words, I'm the recipient of that energy first, <laughs> you know. But then they also go out, and there's a vibration and an energy that does affect the people around us. And we, we have to become responsible for that. On the other hand, when we speak words that are words of loving kindness and compassion, when we speak uplifting words, when, you know, I, I shared a meme that somebody else shared the other day, and I just loved it so much it essentially said, when I forget who I am, can you tell me and remind me 
who I am. Can you speak those words? So maybe I'm showing up in a not so positive way, but can you help me remember instead of getting mad and angry at me and remind me of who I am? Big difference, isn't it? Big difference. And I'm not saying, and I always say this, we set healthy boundaries. It's not that we allow any type of abuse into our experience. And as I shared last week with Mother Teresa, she said that every single person has the face of the Christ. It doesn't matter how they're showing up. And are we willing to look and really be open to seeing that? I love these scriptures because they remind us, um, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. 12, 18, there is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And Ephesians, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And in right speech, we are aware of the words that can heal and do no harm. You know, do no harm is one of the basic tenets of Buddhism. Uh, So do no harm. And when we are in our right mind, why would we ever allow ourselves to say words that would harm or hurt another person? To to bring them down instead of lifting them up. Um, There's an acronym uh, for the word think, and I love this. When you're getting ready to say something, ask yourself, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it important? Is it necessary? And is it kind? That's, that's quite something to measure the words that are wanting to come out, right? Um, these five things. The value of right spe- speech is that we draw merits to ourselves. We are a blessing to all others. We cease from harming others. We cease from harming ourselves. We become a better person. We deepen our spiritual path. We expand toward enlightenment. We begin to understand the ultimate nature of reality. Those are all pretty good things, aren't they? (laughs) So how do we do this? Well, we become the observer. We take responsibility. We say, I'm going to start, when something starts to come out of my mouth, I'm going to start, like, being awake and aware enough to stop it. And here's the, the thing that I love is sometimes practicing right speech is staying silent. Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? Because we want our opinion to be heard because my opinion is the right opinion. So why wouldn't I want my opinion to be heard? No, if it's not something that is helpful, that is true, that is kind, whatever, you know, the right thing then is to, um, again, stay silent. Uh, So one of the things that is recommended is to do affirmations. Uh, So they would be something like, I am becoming more and more mindful of the words I speak. I speak kind, loving, and supportive words to family and friends. I speak kind, loving, supportive words to all others, uh, 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 including myself. That's a big one, isn't it, too? Like becoming aware. As I practice right speech, I am becoming more aware in all areas of my life, and right speech brings peace to my heart and to my mind. So number five, right action. Right action, again, means do no harm, where we're practicing right view, right thought, and right speech that can only lead us to noble action. And to me, this is do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It is, you know, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So loving really opening ourselves to loving other people. And to me, that's what Denise's song was about. You know, what love needs is my voice speaking from my truth. What love needs is showing up, doing what is mine to do. What love needs are my hands and my feet. Um, And Reverend Gattuso reminds us, this is our fifth principle in unity. It's not enough for us to know the truth. We must live the truth that we know. Our actions must be an outpouring of our spiritual practice. Because if we're only getting this intellectually, and where, you know, we sit here on a Sunday morning, or we do our meditation practice or whatever, but we go back right into our lives, and we do the same thing we've always done, how much growth has really occurred there? It's when we're willing to do the hard stuff, my friends. And the hard stuff is is really being honest and real with ourselves about how we're showing up in the world around us. How we're showing up even when we're by ourselves and we're watching the news. 
how we're showing up when we're with other people and they may be gossiping and putting somebody down. We have to become real with ourselves and do the work that is ours to do to really allow ourselves to be the most beautiful and brilliant expression of love that we have come here to be because that is what we have um, come here to be. So what they say is um, witness your behaviors, views, thoughts, speech, and action. Examine how you speak to others on the telephone. To, to wait staff. Um, when you're annoyed with your child or, or your partner or your coworker, uh, when you're stressed, when you're running late or cut off in traffic, um, uh, be the witness of your behaviors. Are you pleased with them? And this is not about beating ourselves up. This is about, I want to do better. I want to be better. So it's not that we're going to make ourselves bad and wrong. We're going to go, oh, that didn't feel good. How can I do this differently? And open ourselves up to that. She says, to have a happy life, one must move out of self-serving interests and actions and endeavor to be a service to all without judgment or discrimination. That's a big call, isn't it? To be a service to everyone without judgment, that's a big one, or discrimination. So, um, because what we realize in this is that every other person's innate worth is as important as our own, and that every single person has that innate value and that innate worth. Um, one of the Buddhist uh, teaches, teachings is the learning to cherish others, and it's such a beautiful teaching. Um, to learn to cherish others takes practice. So here's what they suggest. Before you, you arise, uh, you might say something like this. I know life is going to give me opportunities today to practice cherishing another. Let me be atten attentive enough to see the opportunity and to do something sensitive. I'm going to love that, to cherish each other, to cherish other human beings. And really, you know, taking it beyond, as we're going to do later today with Corabelle's celebration of life, is, is cherish all creatures, to really move into cherishing. So um, in, cl in conclusion, right view is when we are willing to recognize we have these structures of knowing and our perceptions, and we are willing to step back and say, okay, there's a bigger picture here. Uh, I'm going to trust what's happening or, okay, this person that's showing up in my life has been a really negative thing, but I am willing to remember and to see and to claim that they are a perfect, beautiful child of God or whatever. So right view, right thought is that we're going to keep those thoughts in our minds uh, as we move forward in our lives. Right speech is that we're going to speak words that are uplifting, that are positive, that, that, that create we want, we want words that expand, expand ourselves and expands others. And right action is that we do no harm, that we really move into cherishing each other. So I want to close with an Irish blessing because we can't go, you let the day go without an Irish blessing. And it is, may God give you for every storm a rainbow, for every tear a smile, for every care a promise and a blessing in each trial. For every problem life sends, a faithful friend to share. For every sign, a sweet song, and an answer for each prayer. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine always warm your face. The rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And so it is. Namaste. Namaste. All right, <clears throat> and we will conclude with this next week. So as our ushers come forward and our band comes forward, we have the opportunity to be in service to the ministry, to all that we are here to be together, all that we are here to do together. There are many ways that you can give. And um, so let us take our gifts in our hands or the energy of our gifts in our hands and let's bless them together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And thank you, God.
Good morning. Good morning to all of you who are sitting here with us today and all of you who are joining us at home through live streaming. If anyone is present or viewing for the first time, we welcome you and we hope that you will join us again. After the service, our ambassador, Stella, who's there with the beautiful green shirt and gold stole, will have an information packet and a mug and she can answer any general questions you have about Unity of Springfield. Please check in on Facebook, telling your friends and family that you're here at Unity of Springfield, and then if you could silence or turn off your phone. Today's flowers are provided by Cat Bell in memory of her beloved Cora Bell. Aren't they beautiful? Cat um, would also like to invite everyone to Cora's celebration of life today at the church at 2 p.m. Please join me in the mission statement. Together, our mission is to encourage and inspire spiritual and personal growth by empowering each other to be authentically all that we came here to be. And let us speak together the affirmation for today's daily word. My thoughts are clear, calm, and unclouded. I practice the Christ standard of thinking. I focus my thoughts on the things that are true and positive, the things that make me aware of life's blessings. I practice the Christ standard of thinking and I discover a new pathway of thought. I give credence only to the things that are honorable, just, pure, loving, and gracious, knowing that these are the qualities of life that endure and bless. With my mind attuned to the truth, I find that my thoughts are clear, calm, and unclouded. Clarity gives way to decisive direction. Tension and unrest are replaced by balance and poise. The Christ standard of thinking lifts my thoughts, and I am aglow with the light of truth, renewed and filled with courage. The scripture for today is Philippians 4.8. Let's read it together. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And let us repeat the affirmation together. My thoughts are clear, calm, and unclouded. I practice the Christ standard of thinking. As Sue rings the prayer bowl this morning, please hold the following people in your prayerful thoughts. Fern, Richard, Kelly, Georgia's neighbor, Jean Ann, Crystal, Shug, Garrett, Larry, Jim, G, John and Amy, Mark, Steve, Pam, D, and anyone else who comes to mind. We also hold Linda and Steve Kittle in our prayers with the passing of Linda's brother. This morning, let us sing Our Thoughts Are Prayers. The words are on the screen. Thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a highest consciousness, a state of peacefulness. Know that God is always
As you listen to the tones of the prayer bowl, which are attuned to the heart chakra, allow your heart to open. Become aware of the Christ presence within you. Take a deep breath in, hold, and exhale. Let us begin to relax in preparation to move into prayer and meditation. Focus your attention on the crown of your head relaxing as you follow down to your forehead, your eyes and ears, your lips, tongue, and jaw. To release tension or tightness in your neck and shoulders, physically roll your neck, move your shoulders back and forth. Follow your relaxation as it flows down your arms, past your elbows, through your wrists, into your hands and fingers. See relaxation taking place throughout your body as it moves down your spine, into your lower back. Relax your thighs, your knees, calves, ankles, feet, and toes. Take another deep breath in. Pray for the highest and best for all who have been placed on our prayer list. Surround them with healing of mind, body, and spirit. Guidance to provide answers to decisions awaiting. Comfort for the trials and tribulations of life. Strength to endure all experiences. Peace that passes all understanding and love that nurtures, protects, makes no judgment and provides a feeling of warmth. For everyone on earth, we affirm, respect with no reservations, health and wellness, safety and security, abundance to provide for needs, desires, and dreams, loving relationships with oneself, with family, friends, guidance, inner peace, and spiritual connection. We send out blessings embracing our spiritual community, our city, state, nation, all nations, that the human spirit is respected, inclusivity without judgment is expected, attention to care for the environment is a priority. We visualize peace among all in our country and in all countries and all governments, a true peace on earth. We are so blessed, and we share with those near and far the warm, inclusive, loving energy felt in this, our spiritual community. With our minds attuned to the truth, we will find our thoughts are clear and decisive. Tension and unrest melt away. Listening to the Christ within lifts our thoughts, renews us, and fills us with momentum and courage to become all that we came here to be. In the silence, we listen for divine guidance to our own dilemmas. In the silence. 